Jonas here, and today I want to talk about something really heavy, how to save the planet. Let's go for a walk. Rob and I had a chat and I said, there seems to be a lot of talk today about saving the planet. And he said, yeah, but everyone seems to have a different opinion on how to do it. So I started thinking about this and I wanted to make a list of things that I would want to do to make the world a better place. And quite honestly, I thought this was going to be pretty easy, uh, at least easy to come up with a list. But it turned out to be really hard. And I'm sitting there in front of the computer and trying my hardest not to fall for distractions. Like, isn't it always like this? When we're working on something hard, it's just so easy to click away and look for something to cheer us up. But sometimes without us even knowing it, the videos themselves can start another problem. This last one was a slow loris, an animal that lives in the tropical forests of Southeast Asia. Unfortunately, all the slow loris species are today in great decline and, and really threatened, much because of habitat loss, but also illegal trading. Ironically sparked partly by videos like this one. I mean, who wouldn't want to have a slow loris after seeing this little cute video? But the thing is, studies have shown that tickling the slow loris is actually not even good for the animal. In fact, it's quite the opposite. Which brings me back to why I want to save the planet. When I was a kid, I used to love reading my dad's nature books and dream about how I wanted to go and see all those animals in the wild when I grew up. And now I have a daughter of my own and I just can't wait to show her the world. And I am determined to do whatever I can to allow her to read about the same animals that I did and also to see them in the wild. But here's the thing, I think the reason why I had a hard time uh, coming up with a list of things to change is because I kept searching for quick fixes. You know, today we're so used to having quick fixes to everything we do. Anything with apples is the peeling, right? Not anymore. Introducing the revolutionary sauna pan. Getting results is easy. But every day we're fed with some form of news that the world is going downhill. Hard information to hear and take in, but when we wake up in the morning and everything is pretty much the same as the day before, it is easy to start to doubt the seriousness of such news. And maybe more importantly, question why I would have to make sacrifices to do something about it. The world isn't going to come to an end overnight. It's going to take time, that we can be sure of. But we know for sure that our actions are definitely speeding up the process. Our use of resources, our use of energy, and just consumption in general. And just as time has become as valuable as hard cash, we tend to always search for those quick fixes. Things that are gonna make things right, right away. And if you can't find them, it's not worth the effort. And believe me, I have in the past year really experienced the value of time. Any extra minute is like worth gold. So I am right there with you. But here's where we have to start making hard decisions, because when it comes to saving the world, or whatever you want to call it, we can't think, let's fix everything right away. There has to be a fundamental change in the way we think, based on, hopefully, a wish to make a difference. Even if it does take a little bit more effort and time from us all. So my list is going to be based on this. The first thing I have on my list is, think about your options. Instead of just going on old habits, try to make conscious decisions and then maybe include the factor, would this be the best option for the environment? And if you're worried about being transformed into a hippie overnight just because you happen to take out your recycling, I'm gonna tell you, it's not gonna happen. You can still make conscious, good environmental decisions even if you're not calling yourself a tree hugger. And number two, let's not claim that something is an environmental hoax or an act of greenies just because it doesn't suit our needs. I'm not saying that everything is going to be true, but going back to point number one, why not just make a good decision and then ask yourself, is this maybe in any way going to help the environment or do I have an option that could be better choice for the planet? Why not give it a try? And the most important thing is start somewhere, do something. I understand that we can't do everything, definitely get that, but doing something is definitely better than doing nothing at all. My only real concrete example relates to how much stuff we actually throw away. One of my biggest pet peeves is disposable items, single-use items, we only use once and then throw away. 
And I'm questioning the value of those extra few minutes. Why not just do the dishes, and, or even if you have a dishwasher, let the dishwasher do what it does best, and then we would end up with a lot less trash. Okay, this is maybe not what's going to solve all problems, but it does make us think about our use of resources, and we need to find ways to limit this. This is, to me, a pretty easy way to start. All in all, to save the planet, I think our attitude towards the planet needs to change. It needs to be something that we take into account in our everyday lives. It needs to be something that we value just as much as we value time and maybe even money. But I don't think this is something we can force upon anyone. This needs to come from somewhere else. An honest and sincere wish to make a difference and to build something good for the future. You know, this isn't just for the vegans, greenies, hippies, biologists, or whatever. If you're a banker, lawyer, politician, or if you're selling candy at the circus, we all have something to win here. And if not for us, please help me let my daughter grow up in a world where there are still some wild places. It all starts with the right attitude, and I've included a couple of links in the text below with some simple tips and tricks of changes you can make in your home that are good for the environment. Uh, let's all do what we can together to keep the planet safe. All right, thanks for listening to my rambling, guys, and see you soon. Now, if you're watching this video, you should know that it's part of a whole series whereby I asked all of these science hosts to answer the question, how do you save the world? Which is a huge question. I understand that. There's not gonna be one way to answer it. But every single one of these people has their unique perspective on the world. You know, as hosts, they get to travel around all over the place and see things that a lot of us don't get to see. And so I'm really excited to watch them all myself. Now you should know, none of us got together, told anyone what we were going to say. So everybody's response is unique and different and unbiased by anyone else's. So, I encourage you to be part of this conversation. It's an important conversation to have every so often, I think. So, leave your comments down below. Also, you know, continue the conversation on social media. Use the hashtag Save the World. And if you want to make your own video response, I highly encourage that. I would love to see it. Uh, let us know in the comments below when you do that. Okay, thanks for watching.